Hello and welcome back uh, to Nomad PDU. Today I just really wanted to talk about the application of the very popular V5 if you're a tradesperson or you're doing a lot of off-grid work. Uh, it comes down to just taking the time about going through what your needs are as far as draw goes. So a lot of the um, tradespeople will use one of these, uh, sing on one of those uh, their um, recreational fridge to go out to a work site and then they want to charge all their, so mine have got my 18 volt uh, cordless equipment here, some of the drills, my saws, uh, dremels and so on and so forth. And you can do that from the one unit. We're just going to run through slowly and just show you how to do it. The first thing is you might want to plug the fridge in. So what I've done here is just to make it easy. I've got a Y leg that I'm going to plug in to my green Anderson output. And that's got a, a 95 litre fridge plugged into it, <coughs> which I've got here. Now, Nomad V5 also has these outlets, which are 2.1mm. They're actually 5 amp rated each. You can run things like your um, strip light, lighting, uh, audio, or you can run things like a CCTV off those as well. So if you're off grid, you can run CCTV, those types of things off that. Let me just turn that off. Uh, get the light out of there. So that's what they can be used for. So you can run two of those. You've just got to remember the maximum output of this unit is 20 amp at any given time. Each of the SIGA sockets is 10 amp each. The Anderson is a maximum of 20 amp. So if I'm using 20 amp from that, then I can't use anything else at the same time. So this fridge here being 95 litres, it's probably going to use 7 or 8 amp once it fires up, and we'll see that happen shortly. But the great thing about these units is that not only can you, say, run your fridge, you can use your SIGA DC or your Anderson DC setup. You've plugged into the car and you've been charging the Nomad, you can also take this out and then use it as a stepper to take the 12 point, uh, sorry, the uh, whatever voltage in here between 9 to 36 and make it stable at 12.6, which the fridge will like right through to the Nomad is flat. Remember, the fridge may cut out at 11 volt uh, or 10.7, but the Nomad's still half full. So you can use one of these to not only charge it, but you can use that to run your fridge down. So you would have seen I use the Anderson to the, uh, to the module uh, to Anderson, and I use that as a step up and run this 95 litre dead flat, uh, to the Nomad dead flat. So that's the uh, Sega DC, and you also have the Anderson to Anderson version. So they come in fives and tens, and then you've also got 20 amp versions of Anderson style, Anderson to module to Anderson. Um, with the new prismatics you've got, we do have prismatic ones of these um, to take the 14.6 because they're a higher voltage unit. So let's talk about the V5 again. If you're going to be charging things like your 18 volt um, cordless batteries, what I would do is I'd take my pocket inverter. Now, you've got to remember, you can't just plug any size inverter into the unit and draw 1,000 watt. You can't draw uh, 1,000 watt for a Ninja, for example, blender, or a hairdryer, which typically is 1,000 or 1,200 watt. Um, maybe a vacuum cleaner, induction ovens, microwaves, uh, compressors. They're all going to draw 1,000 watt, 2,000, sometimes up to 3,000 watt. Okay, if you've got 20 amp output here, the maximum you're going to have is around about 280 watt output. Got to remember that. So you can use these, which are 150 watt inverters, which are quite handy. And you can charge your cordless equipment. So basically, you can plug your charger, which normally goes to 240. You can plug it into one of the inverters, like so. And then you can plug it into the SIGA socket. Okay, you can plug in an inverter that's going to come out of the Anderson and maybe put a 300 watt inverter and then run a couple of charges off it. So these charges here, uh, being for the Robies, if I plug this in, just see if these are full or not. That one's quite full, this one will be empty. And that's empty. So they'll pull about 4 or 5 amp and the 150 watt inverters are rated at about 10 amp. So this one here, um, starting to charge now, as you can see, and I could quite happily take another inverter, plug it in, and then plug another charger in. And you can do that all day long, as long as you've got a solar panel uh, hooked up to run one of these. So remember, if you've got an off, uh, an unregulated solar panel, you can run up to 200 watt unregulated off, off these, and then you can also plug in your regulated charge when you're driving your car, you know, say 10 or so amp into there. But a 200 watt solar panel here is gonna put around about 10 amp in while the sun shines, and that's gonna pretty much cover your day. Um, while you're also running your fridge. So that'll give you a day out if you're actually working in the field. So if you're a chippy and so on and so forth, you'll be able to charge your, your um, goods like this. As a backup for your home, 
Yes, you can to some degree. You can do things like charge your um, laptops, laptop chargers, which look like these. Uh, they look actually smaller now. Plug that into the inverter. Plug into that, and it's going to charge your laptop. You may have a USB to laptop conversion. That's up to yourself. Um, I've actually got my uh, Samsung phone coming out of the USB at the moment, charging. Yes, you can do that all at the same time. One of the other things I'll show you is that if you watch the screen here, as long as you stay under 20 amps and you stay within the um, parameters of each of the outputs, then you can plug in things like I've got down here. And you want to see me do this before. This is a Dremel. So this is a 240 Dremel. And it's got a variable speed. So the variable speed allows me to watch as the current comes up. Let me see if I can plug this in. Okay. So if I plug this in now, if I can get that open, which I will. Okay. So if I plug this in here, okay. So I'm under 20 amps, so it's not a problem. So I can do that at the same time. Run a drill. So 13 and a half. So you'll see things like the um, those ovens, those trimmel buddy oven things. And you can run those no problem if you wanted to. Um, <clears throat> those travel buddies run off 12 volt anyway, they're not off 240. So as long as you realize what you're taking out of the unit, maximum 20 amp, convert what you've got as the ratings on your accessories, and then you can use the units. What you can't do is say, listen, I'm going to plug it into my domestic fridge, uh, 200 litre domestic fridge, which is going to pull 30 amp or something like that. But that's designed for 240, it's a large scale. The prismatic we've got, the 105, 135, and the coming soon to 55, they'll also have 50 amp output. But that's if you want to use, again, it still has limitations. It's not like you can plug anything into it. <clears throat> the onus is on you to realise that it does have a maximum output. If you exceed that, the unit will end up shutting down and then you'll have to do a reset of the unit. So it's very easy to watch the screen and just don't exceed that. So again, if you're a tradie and so on and you want to run your fridge and, and then have these things running, just make sure you've got a decent size 200 watt uh, unregulated panel, use these. And then if you wanted to have the setup, permanently you could. And then you could have this charging off your, say, DC 10 amp uh, when you're driving. And that's a really good fit out that we see a lot of tradies do. Uh, and off grid, you can do the same thing. You might want a, a 200 watt unregulated panel. And then you might run, say, a 200 watt regulated panel. So you've got 400 watt in total. And then you can have the uh, regulator going into the regulated input. And then you unreg, so you've got 400 watt of panel. You can do that if you're completely off grid. That's going to be heaps and heaps of power, get you through the night and start the unit cycling. So these things do like to be cycled. So run down each night might be going to 11 and a half in the morning and then you fully charge it again by lunchtime and you're running all your gear on it if you require. So this will quite happily run this one here, the 95, and do what I want to do here with all my drills. And this is basically all the equipment I use when I'm uh, working off grid on the farm. Um, and it does the job, charges your laptop. It does your small, your small scale 240 volt accessories. Um, and as long as you stay within the limits, then you'll be fine. So that's the V5. Again, it covers about 90% of your off-grid needs, um, as long as you're using the, the appropriate size inverters, um, and you understand what you're drawing, and what your accessories do draw. Laptops typically draw about 100 to 109 watt, uh, so that you're looking at about, uh, they, they might draw, you know, five or six amp, um, you know, maybe up to nine or so, but that's typically what they'll draw uh, on a laptop charger. So. Hopefully that helps you out in understanding what the Nomad can do, the versatility, be able to use the different types of connections and the points, the 2.1s as well, they're quite handy for the strip lighting um, and then it frees up the rest of the, the uh, components of this. Don't forget the DC-DC options and don't forget if you're going to regulate the charge, use one of the DC-DCs that are uh, specifically for 12.6 uh, lithium NMC or NMC 12.6. Um, and we do have the 5s, 10s and we do have the 20s of these. So again, we will talk soon. If you have any questions, um, contact at nomadpu.com.